Hello everyone! In this tutorial we will continue to study Transformer, only this time from a little bit more practical perspective. So first of all, let's create a screen wall. Drag your images to the timeline and open Resize Layers. Reduce and equalize all images. Now make them 3D and drag to the upper left corner of your composition. Move the X and Y sliders to get the desired result. And yeah, the wall is ready. Do you see how quickly and easily we did that? Okay, let's move on. Change position type to a long path and choose a preset. Lock a long path layer. Close the eyeball so that it's not in the way. Now select the images and click update. Play with the Y and S sliders to get the proper result. Great! We've made a curved wall! Select another frame in the timeline and click Update again. Also, you can add new rows or remove the old ones. Now let's choose another mask. Cool, right? It basically means that it's possible to get a screen wall of any shape. Now let's create a mask. Remember, the layer name must be a long path. Alright, now draw the mask. Select all images and click Update. Change the mask shape to your liking and click Update. Very nice!
Now let's create a round wall of screens, but without a mask. Press A on the keyboard and move away the anchor point along the Z axis. Like so. Move away the anchor points a little bit more. Now open the rotation section and move forward the Y slider. The wall is ready. Now move the Y slider in the vertical subsection. Cool! Also we can change the number of rows. Nice! As you can see, just by playing with sliders you can achieve very interesting results. Now let's create a puzzle animation. Okay, so we have a vector puzzle open in Illustrator. All you need to do now is select the puzzle, click edit slash copy, go back to After Effects and click edit slash paste. Alright, so now we have masks in the shape of puzzle pieces. Just increase and align it a little bit. Now we need to cut the image. Great! Our puzzle pieces are ready. Let's animate them. Change the position type to random. I need to set it to 5000. Good! We can also add a random sequence. Use key editor to select all the keys.
and move them forward in the timeline. Activate the Random Sequence button. Let's set to 60. Pre-render again to see the result. Well, perhaps I should set the maximum value to 8,000. Okay, let's animate opacity. Looks cool. I just need to change it a little bit. Okay, now let's apply Bevel and Emboss. Looks like it's almost finished, isn't it? One last thing would be to animate the camera. So add a camera. Choose 20 millimeter zoom. Add a null object. Designate Null Object as the camera's parent. Adjust the camera. And animate.
Almost there. Looks great. Alright guys, the animation is now complete. Now finally, let's create another example of the image animation. Import a new image and cut it. Then animate the position. Add keys to opacity to get the appearance effect. Great! Also, let's animate the x-axis rotation. Set it to 180. Activate two-sided diagonal arrows. FRM set to 4. And now let's see what we've got. Not bad, right? If we click reverse, the animation direction will change from the corners to the center. Or we can start from the bottom corner and finish in the top corner. You can also increase or decrease the value of the FRM parameter. If you're satisfied with the result, click layer slash precompose to get one file that is easier to manage. Well, that's all guys. I hope you liked the tutorial and you found it useful. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.